Congratulations, you've made it to the last section of our course. This section is all about using Hive. We're going to cover how to get data into Hive, both manually and from a database, and start querying that data once it's imported. In this first video, we'll talk about the manual way to move data from HDFS into a Hive table. First, we'll create the database and the tables, then go over the differences of internal tables versus external as we import our data. Before we can bring data into Hive, we've got to have a place to put it. Let's go to the Query Editor and select Hive, which is very similar to the editor that we used with Pig before. First, we need to create a database in Hive, so we'll say Create Database and call it RSK. Now, even though I hit Enter, Hive didn't create it just yet because I haven't hit Execute from the options below. We'll need to tell Hive the database we want to use is RSK, so Use RSK does that. Okay, now we'll hit Execute, and let's refresh the database list here on the left, and there it is. Good stuff. Now let's create some tables in our new database. To do that, we'll type create table, name it transactions, and I bet you can guess what we're going to put in there. Then we'll need to specify the column names and the data types for them. This should look familiar to you from before, except that we're going to use the decimal format for our price data. and quantity is integer, like before. Now we'll say that the row format is delimited, and that our field delimiter is a comma, since we're using a CSV. And finally, we'll tell Hive to store the table as a text file. All right, let's execute this and see what happens. Come up here and refresh the database list. And now our transactions table shows up under the RSK database. Perfect. So that query worked exactly like it should. Now let's load our data. Come over here to New Query, and we'll type Load Data in Path. Specify our path to the data. And put it into the table Transactions that we just created. Execute that. Then let's go to the file browser, and as you can see here, the transaction CSV isn't in our Cloudera user's home directory anymore. That's because Hive created an internal table, which is the default, and when it does that, it moves the data to its own file structure. So let's go to User, Hive, and then Warehouse, and there's a directory for the RSK database, and that is where Hive put our transactions data. Now because it's here, Hive will manage this file, and if we drop the table, it'll erase the data. That's what happens with internal tables. But what if we don't want that? Well, let's look at how to create an external table. Again, we'll need to create our table first, but this time we'll specify that it needs to be an external table, and we'll name it More Transactions. Then we'll go through the steps of naming our columns and giving them all the data types that work for the kind of data they hold. Other than the external keyword in the create command, this is pretty much identical to what we did before. Row format delimited. Say that we want the fields separated by a comma. And again, we want to store it as a text file. But this time we're going to tell Hive where we want it stored. Okay, let's execute this, then come over and refresh the database list. And now we have two tables in our database. And of course, we can see what our columns are and their data types. Now let's finish up by putting some data in our external table. Click New Query again, and we'll use the Load Data in Path command, along with the path to our data, User, Cloudera, More Transactions, .csv, and we'll load that into the table More Transactions. Execute again, and we're done. We now have two populated tables, one internal, one external. Next up, we'll talk about automating the process of bringing data in from a database.